In the Okanagan Valley, photographer Frank Matsura, a Japanese immigrant, was befriended by a community of cowboys, miners, merchants, and Native Americans. In a time when portraits were stiff, formal affairs, Matsura's photographs seemed to capture a more authentic image of his friends and neighbors. Matsura would have fit right into our culture today of Instagrams and selfies. He took photographs like a family member would, with a real personal connection, many times including himself. Frank Matsura was well-liked in the Okanagan Valley. He was gregarious, full of fun, and seemed to get along with everyone from all walks of life. His camera knew no social barriers. Cowboys, farmers, miners, Native Americans, women, rich or poor, they all came under his spell. Frank Sakai Matsura was born in Tokyo, Japan in 1873 to a samurai family that could trace their ancestry back to the 1600s. At age 28, looking for adventure, Frank Matsura packed up his camera, grabbed his passport, and sailed for America. In the fall of 1903, Frank Matsura arrived in Conconali, Washington, in Okanagan County. He was hired by Jess Dillabout to work at the Elliott Hotel as a laundryman and general roustabout. You know, they need a cook, a, a washer, a roustabout, somebody just help out with the chores. He answered the call. At that time, Okanagan County was considered one of the last frontiers in the American West. People were still packing six guns. But at the same time, you had the automobile, the incandescent light. The Delabaz kind of adopted him and treated him like kind of a big brother to their young family. And there's a lot of pictures of the Delabaz kids with Frank. Matsura soon began taking photographs in his spare time and developing them in the laundry room of the hotel. Early on, his name starts appearing in the Okanagan Record newspaper. At first, Matsura was referred to as the Little Jap. Before long, he becomes Mr. Frank Matsura, the esteemed photographer who is taking wonderful photographs of our community. The bleeding edge of manifest destiny out here. The, the 1880s saw anti-Chinese riots in, in Seattle. There was a lot of uh, animosity, xenophobia, of uh, the fear of uh, the immigrants taking a job that rightfully belonged to a white man. But Frank and his camera seemed to break down social barriers. His gregariousness and his ability to be at, at, at all levels of social strata. Uh, he was much more engaged at a direct level with the people of the community uh, that uh, he was working with, uh, that he would see on a regular basis, uh, that uh, he was friends with. That distinction right there tells me about Frank Matsura, uh, that uh, he uh, lived in the communities. Uh, he was a part of the community. And so with that, his engagement uh, with the people that he was photographing, it was much more personal. Uh, there wasn't this removal. Frank Matsura also had a special connection with the Native Americans. Here was a person who looked a lot like them in skin color and eyes and did not condescend to them. In fact, offered them um, the Japanese humility and, and hospitality and took note of their material culture and, and their families and visited their families at their houses. But by no means, I think, was he trying to document the native people. 
in a way that was trying to capture them before they disappeared. This by no means was the intention of Frank Matsura. You could see that. He allowed the people to be who they were in that time, uh, whether it was proudly wearing their traditional regalia or the, the clothes that they wore out on the ranch with their big Angora shaps uh, and hats and cuffs. He was very conscious of who they were in that moment in time. Sudden death in Okanagan, the OMAC Chronicle reported. Sadly, on June 19, 1913, Frank Matsura's life was cut short by tuberculosis. Frank Matsura was only 39 years old. A shadow of sorrow was cast over the community early in the week by the sudden death Monday night of Frank S. Matsura, the Japanese photographer who has been part and parcel of the city ever since its establishment seven years ago the Okanagan Independent. Frank's place in Okanagan City will never be filled. He was held in high esteem of all who knew him and was known from one end of this vast county to the other.